Here's a new video lesson, and uh, it's a before and after like many of the others, but it's a different topic because what we're going to talk about is playing uh, someone who is psychotic, uh, a murderer. And there are a lot of psychotic characters out there that uh, you probably wouldn't mind playing. Let's, for instance, speak about the Joker or Hannibal Lecter, there's um, Annie Wilkes in Misery, there's um, a lot in Alfred Hitchcock movies, and we happen to be doing a scene from the 1948 movie, Rope, produced and directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And it's about two characters who are psychotically drawn to murder, they murder just for fun. They've just murdered a friend of theirs. And what we need to do is figure out how their mind works. You know how I always want you to think the thoughts of your character. What made them do this? What was the thing that, that triggered this? And uh, at first, it took us a while to figure this out. We worked on it for a couple of weeks before I go, something is not working here. And I decided to work with these guys uh, privately so that we could figure it out. And in the meantime, I did some reading about the movie and how in the beginning, they didn't even release it when it was finished because there were some complaints about the fact that possibly these characters were homosexuals and that this was sort of a sexual thing that they were doing. Uh, in 1948, that was not really an acceptable uh, premise for a movie. However, as I uh, looked over the script again, I felt like, hey, this is what's missing here because there wasn't enough about the relationship. You know how I always say, it's never about you personally. It's about the other person. So each one of these characters needed to make it about the other person and that it was them that they were doing all of this for. Uh, so enjoy this. I hope that you'll make it all the way through the video and go through and watch my coaching of them and even my comments after they've done their performance, because I think you'll learn a lot. Well, the Davids of this world merely occupy space, which is why he was the perfect victim for the perfect murder. Of course, he was a Harvard undergraduate. That might make a justifiable homicide. He's dead and we've killed him, but he's still here. In less than eight hours, he'll be resting gently, but firmly at the bottom of the lake. Meanwhile, he's here. Keep him happy, right? Yeah. But sometimes it's just like enough is enough. You just kill somebody. Can't you just give it a rest for a second? Because it's all he ever talks about. And now you have this open box. Anybody can come in and open it. Come in and say, are you threatening me? That's kind of hot. Get in his face at your tongue and enjoy him threatening. Okay. okay. Do you want me to say it or just like my thoughts? In, in your thoughts, yeah. I suppose anyone was as good, as bad as any other. You perhaps, you frightened me. Okay, that's not sexy enough because you're still going, you perhaps, and your voice is going up. Do you feel it, Rohan? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just start with you perhaps and just don't, just don't, you don't want to like, you don't want to goose it. You're pinching, you're pinching that line in the ass and going, you perhaps, right? You perhaps. You frightened me. Let's say frightened is sexy. You turn me on. You always have. Okay. Both of you like scary stuff, don't you? You frighten me. 
you always have from that very first day in prep school. You have to gradually get more concerned about that, Ayrton. Oh, yeah? You want to kill me? He's threat. He's challenging you, and you're normally the challenger. Okay? Okay, yeah. What do you mean by that? You, perhaps. That was kind of fun choking the life out of that guy. I could choke the life out of you. Okay? And what you need to do is just make the words mean what they mean, right? Maybe I should kill you. You know, you do frighten me. You're scary. You're sexy. You're scary. Sexy. Okay. Just make the words mean what they mean. Don't try to act them. Okay. We got to find the sickness, right? <laughs> so how did you feel about that? Ayrton, did you feel like you were threatening him? Yeah, I was trying to, I don't know if, if, if if it was the, the way I scare each other. Remember, that's your thing. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, like there's people that, that, you know, when they have sex, they try to choke each other and all that, but you can only go yeah. so far. So it wouldn't it be fun if we just choke somebody else to death. Right. But you still have that, that play with each other. Right. You want me to choke yeah. you right now? I'll choke you. everybody knows I kind of threw them for a loop because we weren't playing their relationship at all before and last and I had done some reading about the um about the the actual movie and that they delayed the release of the movie because people thought that it did suggest a homosexual relationship and in that time it wasn't appropriate and so they didn't release it but then they finally did so it really is, you know, my, I, like I say that there's the two most important things in any performance are purpose and relationship. And the relationship is what drives this because the reason that Rohan's character is did it and he is the one who actually strangles the guy while the other one holds it. He doesn't, he feels terrible about it afterwards but he did it because of his relationship and that his boyfriend got a rise out of killing and wanted to do it and wanted to see him do it. So that's what this scene is really about. Okay, let's do it again. Now, this is a museum piece now. We really should preserve it posterity. Except it's such good crystal. I hate to break up the set. Out of this, David Cantley had his last drink. Should have been ginger ale or even beer. I always thought it was out of character for David to drink anything as corrupt as whiskey. Out of character for him to be murdered, too. Yes, wasn't it? Uh, good Americans usually die young on the battlefield, don't they? Well, the Davids of this world merely occupy space, which is why he was the perfect victim. The perfect murder. <laughs> of course, he was a Harvard undergraduate. Then we make a justifiable homicide. He's dead and we've killed him. But he's still here. In less than eight hours, he'll be resting gently, but firmly at the bottom of a lake. Meanwhile, he's here. What are you doing? It's not locked. All the better. It's much more dangerous. 
Anyways, the lock's too old. It won't work. I wish it would. I wish we hadn't found it here. I wish it were somebody else. It's a trifle late with that, don't you think? Who would you have preferred? Kenneth? I don't know. I suppose anyone was as good or as bad as any other. You perhaps. You frightened me. You always have from that very first day in prep school. Part of your charm, I suppose. I'm only kidding, Brandon. I obviously can't take it as well as you, so I'm turning on you a little. That's rather foolish, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, very. Um, may I have a drink now? By all means. This is an occasion. It calls for champagne. Champagne? I put some in the icebox. Oh, when did you put it there, Brandon? Just before David arrived. But you knew this would work? Of course. You know I never do anything unless it did it perfectly. I always wished for more artistic talent, you know. I think murder can be an art too. The power to kill can be just as satisfying as the power to create. Philip, do you realize that we've actually done it exactly as we planned and that a single infinitesimal thing has gone wrong? It was perfect. Yes. An immaculate murder. We've killed for the sake of danger and for the sake of killing. We're alive, truly and wonderfully alive. Even champagne is an equal to us. Or is the occasion? I'll take it though. You're not really frightened anymore, are you, Philip? You can't have fear, you know. Neither of us can. That's the difference between us and the ordinary man. They talk about committing the perfect crime, but nobody does it. Nobody commits a crime just for that. Just for the experiment of committing it. Nobody except us. You're not really frightened anymore, are you, Philip? No. Not even of me? Interesting. That was interesting, wasn't it? Wow. What it a big also, I, I feel kind of disgusted after playing this character every time I did the scene. <laughs> That's good. That's a good thing. I mean, you know, because you come back into yourself. You, you know, you don't want to be disgusted by the character as you're doing it because you are him. And he's not disgusted by himself. He's proud of himself. He loves what he just did. Right, you, you yeah. don't you can't judge your character while you're being him, but you do get to be yourself afterwards. Thank God, and you don't need to like some actors that are doing method acting. They kind of want to keep their character all the time that they're working on that character, and uh, that's not necessary because what you think is what you are, and you can th change your thoughts at any moment. You know, you, you can, and so you know. But before they say action, you don't have to be a murderer. And after they say cut, you don't have to be a murderer. But during those times, between those times, you are. And you do think that way. And you are in this relationship. And you just killed somebody. Right? Yeah. And, uh, wow, well, both of you made huge changes since last week. 
before we were just doing it about one person didn't want to murder and one did, but we didn't really fill it up with the reasons why you did it. And um, this, this time it really had a lot of that undercurrent all the way through, you know, because you did it for each other, right? Good. Excellent work, you guys. Really good job.